people to take it off. <laughs> so we're here in uh, our familiar surroundings this evening with about one third of the house uh, unavailable for seating. And it appears that that won't be a problem, unfortunately. Well, fortunately. I want to mention that uh, I hope the folks, uh, is there anyone here for me, the Brookline or Cambridge? Oh, I hope so. Okay. Uh, I hope you noticed the remarks in the paper by the uh, Secretary of Education about the people that live in those two uh, marvelous towns. And uh, we are in Cambridge, and we hope to uh, put to shame the sense uh, that these towns lack, quote, patriotism, unquote, uh, like the caucus aside. So this evening, uh, this is an open, open. In other words, the whole thing is open. We have a special set in uh, this, uh, the middle uh, where Teddy Wilson and Chris Fitzgerald and I will do something. It's not thematic. But uh, for the most part, we have already some 14 or 15 people signed in. It looks like an interesting night. And with no further ado, we'll have our announcer, Daniel Stern. Let's have a hand, Daniel. Yes. Labor Day. I'm not sure it's actually Labor Day Eve. What, I don't know exactly what day is Labor Day. After all, anyway, and I can, now I can appropriately speak a, a welcome to you in French because this morning I just returned from Montreal. So, bienvenue to tout personne ici. And I don't know any other languages, unfortunately. So, if where was I? I was in Montreal this morning. Freaking coffee. <laughs> no, I had a big, big bowl of cafe au lait, and it was, it was. There's some good, definitely good stuff. Among them food in Montreal. Anyway, enough about me. Enough about me. Um, our first open reader will be Bruce Harding. Tonight I want to read from uh, Ed Sanders' Thirsting for Peace in a Raging Century. And uh, the poem is called The Age. The Age. This is the age of investigation, and every citizen must investigate for the pallid tracts of guilt and death, slight as they are, suffuse upon the retentive electromagnetic data retrieval systems of our era. And let the investigators not back away one micro unit from their investigation. For the fascist hirelings of gore await in the darkness to shoot away the product of the ballot box. And if full millions do not investigate, we will see the age of gore and the age of criminals of the right will rise up drooling with shell-fixed toxin to send a berserker blitz of mod Manchurian malefactors mumbling with motorized Belwoofian trans instructions to chop up candidates in the name of some person with the serotonin imbalanced moan of national security. And this is the age of investigative poetry when verse froth again will assume its prior role as a vehicle for the description of history. And this will be a golden era for the public performance of poetry, when the Diogenes Liberation Squadron of strolling troubadours and muckrackers will roam through the citadels of America to sing opposition to the military hitmen whose vision of the USA is a permanent war cast in a coast-to-coast -coast cancer farm and a withered metal back hostile American forever. And this is the age of left-wing epics with happy endings, of left-wing tales, movies, poems, songs, tractata, manifestos, epigrams, calligrams, graffiti, nanonics, and George's Brack Frottage collage assemblage data clusters, which dangle from the cliffs the purest lyrical air to hang down a hummingbird singbird throat. This is the age of garbage, and we're not talking here about garbage self garbage but an era of robotic querulousness. How at the onset of a time when the power of a country is up for grabs, the, the garbage rulers, attired in robes of military industrial sink, silk, arise to hurl as swift, as swift in their machinations as a chorus in the ice capades. And none of us will trudge this era without a smirched face waft of thrilly awful dumped upon our brows of social zeal. And the pus suck provocateurs, armed with their roboting plates of dog vomit, will leap at us while we stand chanting our clue ridden dactyls of Know the new facts early. Know the new facts early. Know the new facts early. And do not back away one micro unit just because some CIA white weird Madoff 
whose control agents never ended World War II and bathed your life with a mouthful of turtle exudate from the head of the Confederate Intelligence Agency. <coughs> Not easily. And this is the age of nuclear disarmament, when the roamers of the hills join hands with the nests of the valley wild to put an end to new puke with, with a zero waiver total trans world peace walk. That the war cast wave no more their wands of plutonium and the dirt and the nuclear mist no longer chop up the code of life. And this is the age of triumph of beatnik messages of social foreman coded into the clatter of the mass media over 20 years ago. Ha ha ha! How do we fall down to salute with peals of he 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 that the beats created change without a drop of blood? In 1965, it was all we could do to force control the writers of Time magazine not to reinforce the spurious handsome synapse that pot puff leads to the poppy fields. But now the states are setting hemp free. Ten years of coded foment. He, he, he. Yesterday, the freeing of verse. Today, pot. Tomorrow, free food in the supermarket. He, he, he. And finally, let us never forget that this is the age of ha-ha-he. Ha-ha-he is such a valuable tool in the tides of social transformation. Ha-ha-he will set you free from the worm clump angst. Ha-ha-he will even curdle the fires of jealousy. Ha-ha-he outvotes the warrior caste. Ha-ha-he doth whelm the self-devouring quarrel. Ha-ha-he peels out throughout all the cosmos. Men to lad with poet angels holding Plato's seven single syllables in a higher, tighter harmony than the early Beach Boys. <coughs> this is the poet's era, and we shall all walk, crinkle-toed, upon the smooth, cold thrill of Botticelli's shell. That's Ed Sanders. Thank you.